Okay, um, mean value theorem. First of all, it's a good idea to think about back to what this word means before you start looking at this. When you're grade 8, you learn about the, uh, the words mean, median, and mode, and, and stuff like that. The word mean just means one type of average. There's, there's, I mean, the median is another sort of measure of central tendency. All of those things together are called measures of central tendency. Not that that's necessarily applicable here, but the mean is um, looking at what, what the average is. For this, there's, there's sort of one specific version we're going to look at called Rolle's theorem, and then the more general. This, this is, this is a special case of the mean value theorem. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about this person, but I remember reading one time that it that it said uh, this guy distrusted calculus because he was around when calculus the ideas were just becoming uh, uh, developed. So, what? No, no. Calculus is an is a idea developed by uh, two different people, sort of at the same time, independently, by Newton or. Uh, Newton and Leibniz, not Leibniz or whatever. But this guy, this guy distrusted calculus. Like anything new, sometimes people are skeptical, and that's how that's how science works. You're skeptical. You don't just jump on the bandwagon with everything, right? You have to prove things and and so on. But he distrusted calculus, although this theorem that he came up with or or ended up uh, developing sort of became. Uh, a calculus idea, ironically, I suppose. It's not that uh, complicated of an idea. If you have a certain value of a function here, if you have two values of the function that are the same, so if at point A the value is f of A, and it's the same value again at B, right? If 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 something like that happens, like if you uh, if you throw a ball up in the air and at one point it is at 10 feet in the air, and it is again at 10 feet in the air, there has to be some place, at least one point, when the ball, when the, when the speed of the ball is zero, okay? Or the, the, the velocity of the ball is zero, right? You throw it up in the air, it comes back down again. There has to be at least one point here where its velocity is zero. There has to be at least one point on here where the slope of the line is zero. I don't know if this guy used this term, the derivative, but he probably talked about the slope of the tangent line. There has to be one point in between there where the slope of the tangent line is zero. You can't draw it any other way. There might be lots of places, right? It might be that it happens once and again or whatever, or it might happen the entire time if this thing is just horizontal like that. So it's saying if those are equal... now. Um, it doesn't have to be that they're equal to zero. It can actually be that they're just equal, right? This part isn't necessarily, doesn't have to be true there. Uh, then the then the slope is zero. If you look at the more general case here, okay, this 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 is generalizing this now because this point doesn't have to be the same height. You could put it up here and then say, well, if if this function went like that. This slope goes. Th oops, this slope goes through those two points. There has to be at least one point where that slope matches. Okay, where that slope is the same. Will I get away from my nice, uh, terrible drawings there? Here's here's one point. Here's another point. Right, you're starting there, ending there. I put this somewhere on here, and the slope of that green line is the the slope of the secant line. That's the average slope between those two points. If this is uh, continuous and it's a closed interval and all that, there has to be at least one place in there where this slope matches the other slope, right? Somewhere in here, it looks to me it's sort of there, right? Those slopes match. Up here, it's it's faster. Like if this is the speed of a car or something, right? If this is a car taking off and this graph shows its uh, its distance compared to time, distance time, this is its average speed over the trip. Right? If it travels two kilometers in four minutes, not going very uh, fast then, I guess. This is its instantaneous speed, right? At the beginning when it starts, it's not moving very fast. 
and then it's going faster and faster. If it covers two kilo sorry, um, four kilometers in two minutes, let's say I got it backwards. Four kilometers in two minutes. Uh, maybe it is going pretty fast. Yeah, sorry, I'm thinking hours here. Four kilometers, two hours. So I don't have to do any unit conversions in my head. Four kilometers, two hours. Pretty slow, right? It's at some point it's going its average speed. If it starts out going zero kilometers an hour and it ends up going a lot more kilometers an hour, it's at some point traveling its average speed there, somewhere in the middle. You can't draw this so that even if this was a complicated function here, it's going its average speed somewhere along the way there. Okay? Does that seem fairly obvious or straightforward? If this goes from here to here, there's a point where it's traveling its average, where the, where the slope of the secant line equals the slope of the tangent line. If you have this point up to this point, the secant line is connecting those two. There's a couple places where it's equal, where the slope of the secant line equals its derivative. That's what this is saying here. The derivative, okay, if we're trying to match the color here, this is, this is the slope of the secant line. This is the, this is the derivative, right? So what it's saying is there is some point C here where the derivative equals slope of the secant line. It has to be continuous. Some things that have to be true. It has to be continuous on the entire thing, and it has to be differentiable on the open interval there. Okay? Differentiable means it can't have any sharp corners like this, because then it then it doesn't have to be true. If it's not differentiable on that entire thing, right? Draw something so that it's not differentiable the same way. If you make a if you make some kind of a function here where it's not differentiable the whole way, so if you're starting at A and you're going to B here, and you're drawing some graph from here to here and it's not differentiable the whole way, uh, if it's like that and then down to there, it's not differentiable the whole way, so then there, it isn't necessarily true that the slope somewhere is equal to that slope. Right? This slope is the whole time there and then suddenly it's that. There's nowhere where that's equal to this slope. It has to be differentiable, so there can't be any sharp corners like that. I, I think sort of geometrically, when you look at the picture, it's obvious. It's when people have to use this definition that they are that they get lost. This is just the slope formula you learned in grade 10 with some fancy function notation in it. right? It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this is just the derivative, okay? It's it's sort of hard to to ask questions to have you apply that concept. In grade eight, it's really easy to ask questions about some of the concepts you do. Let me show you what I mean here. The con the, the questions that get asked about mean value theorem are sort of weird questions. In grade eight, somebody might show you an example and say, here's how to solve this equation. You move this over here, and you get 3x equals negative 2, and then you divide both sides, and you get this. Now here's a 1,000 questions that look like this. Go do a 1,000 questions. Here it's hard to ask questions because it's not showing you how to do something. This is not showing you how to do something. This is a concept. Okay, there are concepts buried in this, you know, doing this. There's concepts, right? You have to do the same operation of both sides. Those are concepts, but it's easy to come up with questions where you're just kind of following the recipe. This is not a following the recipe type of thing. This is taking that concept and some of the questions here are applying that concept. If you have some kind of a function here, show, show that it satisfies the hypothesis of the mean value theorem. That's just saying, show that it meets the criteria that we laid out in that, okay, for this interval. And then find values <laughs> whose existence are guaranteed by the theorem. I should stop this before.